Hello, Blake Rudis here with F64 Academy, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make your own solar eclipse in Photoshop. Why not just photograph it? Well, some of us didn't get that luxury because <laughs> the weather in the Midwest is awesome. All right, so I went out to shoot the solar eclipse, had this big old event planned with my wife. Uh, and so we get out to this place, it's in Weston, Missouri. It's a beautiful place, rolling farm fields. It was it had been the perfect place to have both a wide angle shot and some long telephoto stuff. And lo and behold, not predicted, giant cloud comes through, that giant cloud turns to rain, and my total eclipse looked something a little bit more like this, which it was actually kind of interesting because I got to hang out with my wife. But now I'm thinking to myself, when I see all these pictures, I'm like, man, I really want my solar eclipse shot. So I figured, well, let me just show you how to make a solar eclipse in Photoshop. So the first thing we're going to do, we need to start with a blank canvas, all right? And on this blank canvas, I want you to go up to File, go to New, and we're going to go with something that's 6,000 by 4,000 pixels at 300 resolution. Now, that's going to be about the size of a 24 megapixel photo. You want to go crazier? Go right ahead but this should be fine just for us, okay? So we're gonna press okay. Now with this canvas, which showed up on my other screen, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller here and see how my background is set to white? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and press Command or Control I to change that to black because we all know everyone's pictures are pitch black, okay? If that wasn't black, you could go up to edit and you could go to fill and choose the color black, okay? Looks good. Now what we need to do is we need to make a new layer. Just hit this little tear sheet right here, make a new layer. We're gonna come up here and we're gonna grab our elliptical marquee tool. Now I'm gonna, if yours is set to the rectangle marquee tool, just go ahead and click and hold and press elliptical. Now, the thing about the elliptical tool is that we want a circle. So how do we make a circle? Well, click, press and hold shift and move out. That's gonna make a perfect circle. And because this is not dead center, if we press Command or Control H to get our guides on, if we're in this marquee tool and we move this around, you'll see that it snaps and it shows us the dead center of our photograph because that's pretty much where everyone else put their solar eclipse photos, right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna press Shift F5 and we're gonna fill that with white. Okay, so now we got a big white circle here and we need another circle, but we need it to be black. So we're gonna press Command or Control J to duplicate that layer, and this time we're gonna press Control I. Now we've got a black circle on top of a white circle. Let's press Control T, and that will get us into transform mode. If I press Shift and Alt, or Shift and Option on a Mac, that will ensure that this only grows from the center of the canvas, okay? So now we just press Shift and Alt, make this slightly smaller than our white circle, and press Enter. So now we've got a white circle behind a black circle. Looks pretty good, right? Well, this is what we need to do. Go to Filter, go to Blur, and go to Gaussian Blur. And I'm gonna blur this circle quite a bit here. Really far out. Look at that. Wow, we, are, we have our own eclipse now. Press OK. So I'm gonna press Control J to duplicate that so I get a little bit more of that aura around there, okay? So we'll call this Blur 1, and we'll call this Blur 2. All right, so we're almost there. We've got ourselves a pretty good eclipse right now. Let's go ahead and do this. We press B for the brush tool, and we right click in here. What I wanna do is I'm gonna add some brushes to my set here. So I wanna go up here to our little gear icon and we're going to add our special effect brushes, okay? And we'll say append. And the brush that I want you to select is gonna be this brush that looks like a leaf, okay? So go ahead and get out of our preset manager now here. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna press my right bracket key to make that a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna make a new layer here, and I'm gonna brush with white. Now you're like, why are you putting leaves on our solar eclipse, Blake? Well, because that's what happens during a solar eclipse is leaves fall everywhere. Didn't you see it? So no, actually what happens here is we're gonna go up to filter, we're gonna to go to blur, 
and we're going to go to radial blur. We are blurring these leaves. The reason why we use these leaves and not a solid brush is you'll, if you ever try to use a solid brush with the radial blur, it doesn't work very well. So we'll use this radial blur and we'll change the amount to 100% and not spin. By default, it's probably set to spin. Let's change it to zoom and change it to the best quality we can get for our blur leaves and press OK. All right, so you see we have some blur that we're coming out here. It kind of looks like the sun's blur that's on the outside of a lot of those pictures that we saw from the solar eclipse. So what you can do with this is go to filter, go to blur, and go to radial blur again. And we'll change this from best to good and just press OK because we just want it to blur out just a little bit more. So now what we need to do is just put this behind our black blob there. What we can do is we can press Command or Control T and we can kind of make it look a little bit more random. So we don't want it to be perfect like it was. Just make it look a little bit more random, maybe something like this and maybe even drag this one in a little bit more. And there we go. So now we've got a nice little uh, flare that's coming out around the sun. If we press Control J, we can duplicate that and make that bigger, or we could press Command or Control T and make it a little bit smaller. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of playing around with some of the things that I can get here. Uh, when we duplicate these though, we're getting that effect kind of doubled a little bit. So we get more of that flare. So you see I made three or four copies of this and you can rotate these anywhere, any which way you want around the sun. And it works just fine there around the moon, I should say, around the edges of the sun. So we're getting pretty close to our solar eclipse look here. But one thing we are going to need to do on the outside of this is change our brush. Press B for the brush tool, right click and change it back to just your regular maybe 700 pixel size brush with the hardness set to zero. Okay, And we're going to make a new layer above our moon. So we'll just go boom and just click that right there. And again, if we want, we could press Command or Control T, and we could change the shape and size of this uh, brush that we just used here to kind of make it look more like that flare that we see on some of those pictures from the eclipse where the totality was just about to end and I didn't get to see an ounce of it. <laughs> so that looks pretty pretty good, right? We're, we're getting pretty close to our eclipse there. But there's some other things that we can do with this. I like some of these eclipse pictures that had the clouds in them. So I actually pre-prepared, well, I guess pre-prepared isn't a word. I prepared to put some clouds into my eclipse shots because we did have some clouds. So I took my, I think it was 1500 millimeters effective zoom on my A6300. It was a crazy amount of zoom and I zoomed into these big puffy clouds so that I could add them to my solar eclipse images if I wanted to. So I've got one of those cloud images right here. This cloud image you are free to download. It, if you look, if you're on YouTube in the description, you'll see that cloud uh, download button there if you're on the website on f64 watching this now you'll see a button above that says download these clouds either way you can download these clouds to put into your image so what I'm gonna do is because I've got this set up and this is a 24 megapixel image 6,000 by 4,000 I'm just gonna press V for the move tool and move this and press and hold shift while I do it so that it aligns from the center okay so now this does not look good. Okay, it's not supposed to look good. But if we drop this opacity a little bit, like, you know, maybe to 40% or something like that. And what I want to do with this is I want to use blend if to my advantage here. So I'm going to double click on this right here. And you're going to see our blend if options come open. Now this is blend if gray. So we're using basically the luminance values of our image. I'm looking at this cloud layer. I want this cloud layer to blend in a little bit more. So there's a couple things that I'm going to do. I'm going to take this slider right here and take anything that's basically gray values in this cloud image and get them out of there. But I don't want to do that through masks or anything tedious. I can do that with blend if I can say, OK, any grayish black to grayish areas in this image, I want you to just disappear. So I'm going to move this over until I start to touch on the edges of my clouds like that. And then I'll press alt or option and split that and kind of feather that over a little bit and then bring this on out until we just start to get some of those clouds appearing there right in front of our clips like that. Looks good, okay. 
and then we'll go ahead and look at the underlying layer. If we move this over, it's going to protect anything black on the underlying layer. Well, <laughs> that's not really going to help us. But if we move this over, it's going to protect anything white from that underlying layer. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's let's protect the flare that we have around the sun there from that from happening. Okay, that looks good. Press OK. And now what we're going to do here is we're going to make a curves adjustment layer that only applies itself to the, our cloud image. So I'm going to make a new adjustment layer, set that to curves. And what I'm doing here is I'm really just going to start playing with this. I'm going to press Alt or Option and make sure that this curves adjustment layer is only affecting that. That's going to clip this in. So if you press Alt or Option and click in between, that will make sure that we're only affecting what's happening underneath. So you see what I'm doing here is I'm making my cloud image darker. And what happens when I do something like this? Perfect. That looks much better. And what this is doing is it's, it's modifying the underlying layer, which is our cloud layer, so that we can make certain things kind of disappear from the image. I'm going to click on this cloud layer, press Control T, and that's just going to get me into free transform mode. I'm going to pull this cloud up like this maybe over like this so that our clouds are not affecting our sun and moon harmony that are happening right now. It's so pretty. And we'll press enter to get it locked in. So now what I want to do is I'm going to make a gradient that's just going to apply itself to this cloud layer. And gradients are awesome. I just, just got done doing a course on gradients. And what I love about gradients is their ability to manipulate the colors in a photograph in such a unique way uh, that you really can't do with brushes. I mean, you can try, but it just, it wouldn't be as successful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to my adjustment layers and I'm gonna click on gradient. And the gradient that I'm gonna click on is right in here. Um, basically what I wanna do is just come up with a color, but it's gonna be really hard for me to tell what color I want right now. So I'm gonna press okay, and I'm gonna press okay on this. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to change this to overlay. And you're gonna see really quickly that, that gradient already starts to affect our image. But like I said, I only want this to affect our cloud layer. So press Alt or Option to make that gradient fill only fill into our, um, our cloud layer. Now, if we click on this gradient right here, I'm gonna change this gradient from linear to radial so it looks like a burst coming out from the center. And I'm gonna change the color of this to, let's see what kind of colors I want here. I kinda want something that's gonna look like eclipse type colors. Ooh, that's pretty. I like that. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm not trying to make a mockery out of the eclipse. I just, I'm really kind of upset that I was not able to get a really good photograph like I wanted to of the eclipse. Uh, but that's okay, because I did have a good time with my wife. So let's use something like, uh, I'm just kind of clicking around here at some of my random gradients. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Let's use that one, and we'll press okay. So I like the way this gradient looks. It's a radial gradient. Basically what a radial gradient means is it's just coming out from the center of the image and moving its way out, and it's only applying itself to our clouds. Let's see what another blending option would look like, though, if we tried something like Multiply. Multiply looks good because it pushes those clouds away a little bit more. Let's double click on that gradient and find another gradient to see if we can find one that will give us a little bit more color in there with Multiply set. And... I think I like the way even something like that one looks. That's cool, I'll go with that. And our because our cloud layer is only set to 40%, it's not coming through very high, but if you wanted more of an effect with your clouds, you can move that up a little bit. So at this point, we pretty much have a good look in Eclipse. We have, um, let's go back to the very beginning. We have our black layer, we added a blur, we added another blur, and another blur. Radial blur is here to get th that nice sunburst. And then we have our moon that's coming up over top of it. We have a nice little flare that's happening there in the corner from the totality ending. And then we have our clouds that we've made look like they blend in. So we have this really cool kind of ethereal looking eclipse. Now, if you wanted to, at this point, you could add another gradient here. If we clicked on the top here and we go to our uh, gradient, we could click on another gradient. We could set that again to radial. And then we could press OK. And with this gradient, we want this one to kind of just cover the entire photograph. So if we change this to overlay or soft light or something like that, so let's try overlay first. We can go ahead and double click on here, click on our gradient and look at a color. Ooh, that's nice. Look at that. We get some colors that other people didn't get. Oh, look at that one. Pretty cool. 
<laughs> we're getting colors that nobody else got here, right? So we get better colors here. Um, so we can just see what kind of gradient we want. I think this one looks pretty cool. But again, I think it might be a little bit too much. So we can just drop the opacity on that gradient a little bit. And now we have our own solar eclipse that we've just created in Photoshop. And the beauty of this is we can put anything we want in the center of it. So one of the things that I did with mine here was I took the F64 Academy logo and I just moved it right into the center of my image and we have a nice little F64 Academy solar eclipse happening right here on YouTube. But it gets even better. Many of us only had one shot at this eclipse, right? So here's a little pun for you. We now have our one shot at the Death Star with the solar eclipse style. I don't know what you saw, but I mean, that'd be pretty darn cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> All right, so we did quite a bit here. I'm not poking fun at the Eclipse. I've got a lot of great pictures that are coming through my Facebook feed because I've got a lot of photography friends that actually got a good picture of the Eclipse. I did not happen to get one because of the weather, but we can create one in Photoshop really quickly and really easily, and it's a lot of fun. So really what we did here was we just got creative with some blurs, we got creative with some gradients, and we made our own solar eclipse that's actually kind of fun. Now we actually want to do some other things with it by putting other things in there and making this kind of solar eclipse composite. So again, my name is Blake Rudis with F64 Academy. If you like this, please comment on it, share it, and tell a friend because you might have another friend like me who went out to shoot the eclipse and got a whole lot of nothing. Uh, pictures wise. I had a great time with my wife though, so let me not discredit that. We had a great time. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in the feed. And thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. Mm -hmm.